We are at Bates Nursery with an authority, David Bates. An authority on how to tell us when we want to put vertical into our gardens, whether it's a pre-existing garden, we're planting a new garden, or maybe it's even a container. And plant selection has a lot to do with that. So David, help us out. Well, I'd be glad to, Annette. Thanks for coming out today. Now, what we've got right here in front of us is the blues, blue spruce. Now, this is, a, this is an upright, weeping blue spruce, but it's a really slow grower. A lot of landscape situations that you uh, run into today are many people have much smaller yards than they used to That's have. That's true. And so the, the big consideration anymore with new plant varieties being developed are plants that will do the same thing, give you the same look, but do it within bounds that will be able to, to keep it within the confines of the area that you've got to work within. Yeah. And certainly this is one of those plants that would do that quite well. This plant typically won't get much more than about eight to nine feet in height. The biggest mistake uh, that many homeowners will make in purchasing an upright plant, be it as a focal plant or as a corner plant for the home, mm -hmm. is that they, they fail to realize what the ultimate growth habit of this plant is gonna be. Right. They'll plant it at the scale that it looks right at that size when they purchased it without allowing that as time passes, this thing could get much larger. And that's a, a common mistake that many landscaper, mm -hmm. people who are landscaping their homes make. It's just simply put them too close. So it, you may have the space to afford something larger, just be uh, apprised of what the growth habit is okay. and what its needs are gonna be ultimately. Wow. You don't wanna have a plant that's gonna get 20, 25 feet tall stuck under the eave of the house. Right. You wanna bring it out enough where it has room to grow. Let's go check out some more possibilities All right. then. David, let's talk about blue color on the spruce and some of these other blue plants and these yellow plants. Right. Now, can you expect a 12 month season all year of color or do they go through stages of where they're not as brilliant? Well, there is some fluctuation to the time, time of year, but as a general rule, they're gonna retain that color year round. When the new growth comes out, it's usually more vibrant. And yeah. as the season fades on, they do fade a bit into the hot part of the summer, but as cold weather returns, you see that intense blues and golds uh, come back that the cold weather really brings out. Yeah, and if you're planning on that color as part of your impact, then you need to consider that. Now, this plant is, what is this? This is a weeping white spruce, and this is another great uh, addition for a plant as an accent plant, a focal plant, something that if you, where you need something upright, but you don't want it to grow at a ridiculously fast rate. You know, and um, over a, an eight, seven, a 10 year period, this may reach 10 feet in height. So it's something that is manageable. It's not gonna outgrow your area. And, and really in middle Tennessee, it would be uh, unusual to see that much growth okay. come out of this. I love to add this color in my garden because it's something that brings colors together, even though it's not chartreuse, but yellow is one of my favorite things, so this would be a good way, wouldn't it? Well, yeah, this is a nice soft yellow. Sometimes some of the golden colors are so brilliant that they perhaps are overbearing, depending yeah. on what else weather elements you have in the landscape, but the, the golden deodar cedar is a certainly a, a lovely addition to any landscape. It has that, uh, that natural weeping growth habit. It does need to be staked in order to keep it growing upright. So if you all, once it runs off the end of the stake, it's gonna begin to start to turn over sideways and then you'll start seeing growth yeah. pr protrude down from it. I'm familiar with this. This is the forest pansy in the weeping form. Well, yeah. Or, or whatever, you this tell is, me. This is Ruby Falls. You, you right. don't have to go to Rock City to see it. You no. can have one in your own home. <laughs> this I is a Ruby, Ruby Falls uh, red bud, and it is an excellent weeping form of red bud. And you, again, you see it is a staked up tree, and uh, that's necessary all during the, the growing process when you have it in, the, in cultivation in a nursery. That could be removed after a year in the ground. However, if you want to continue to train it up to keep it from being quite so low, you know, it will tend to want to stretch back down to the ground. So it mm -hmm. may be something that you want to continue to grow up for a bit. Yeah, and I, th not only the, are the leaves burgundy, but the color of the bark on this is so beautiful. And when this plant blooms in the spring, it is just clustered everywhere. All the way up and down the And stem. listen, this really year, amazing. everything that bloomed was heavy fruited and heavy seed pods. In the landscape for many years, you know, there is the tendency when people find a plant they like, uh, the 
the thought that more is better is really not true. Right. Uh, and you tend to create problems when you do a monoculture type of planting. When you plant uh, huge numbers of a single type of plant, any uh, characteristic flaws that it has, anything it is susceptible to, uh, becomes revealed and, and greatly magnified. And Leland Cypress is one of those examples that you see throughout the landscape. They've been used for years. They have been a great fast-growing screening, screening plant. Plants. They do wonderful for that, except for one thing. Uh, they are susceptible uh, to a, a couple of different diseases that there is no cure for. They get, uh, they get issues that come up, and you can perhaps, if it's, a, if it's a lesser type, you might be able just to prune a limb or two. More often than not, you wind up having to take the whole plant out. Mm -hmm. And then that's just one. If you have a screen of 15 of them, then you're, you, it, it never happens on the end. It's always yeah, in the middle. So you have to transplant one in the middle, and so the process Costly. goes on. Uh, Green Giant Arborvita is, is a, a great solution it to is. Leland Cypress. They don't have the, uh, the incidence of disease issues that, are, that will wipe out the whole block of them. Okay. So they're easier to take care of. Okay, now we're in some of these shade tolerant plants. But you know, there's an important factor right here before us. When people buy plants and they've got a visual of how the proportion of this plant is gonna be in their landscape, right. they overlook an important thing. This plant is gonna step down and yep. it's going to lose Almost a foot, a foot. of height. Yep. So, so it's not four feet tall, it's no, three feet tall. That's right, so they need to remember that factor. It's very important because it uh, can set you up for disappointment and depression, <laughs> and we don't want that to happen. No, no but depression. The plants, but the, if it's planted well, there's every reason to expect it to grow, grow and do fast. well. Okay, now tell us about this. Now, the cephalotaxis or plum yew, then this is a, one is known as a fastigiata, which in Latin just means it grows upright and skinny. That's mm -hmm. what that means. So this this plum yew is uh, like many of the other uh, plum yews. It's great in the shade. Uh, the most difficult of all landscape situations to deal with is lack of light. Mm -hmm. You can do almost anything when you've got light. And I've got a, a, a someone who sent me an email yesterday. It has this garden and she's tried for years and can't do things well with it. But when you have shade gardening, you have to adjust your expectations right. or you've got to be prepared to cut some trees down and get light in there. Yeah. This is one of those plants that affords you the, to be able to have a nice uh, evergreen plant and not have to worry about the lack of light. Right. It will grow well at even heavy shade. And you know, we're going into another whole section for the garden with this, this dark green, the glossy is another texture mm -hmm. and another surface. And what goes so well, people love white gardens, white blooms. I can see white azaleas, I can see white impatiens, white caladiums, and how this would give you the line with those plants. Absolutely. That's a good one. There is an acorn. So what does that tell you? It must be an oak. I think you're right. And this is a regal prince oak. And what is uh, unusual about this tree, uh, being an oak, is that you see it's very upright growing. It is, again, fastigate. Uh, has that columnar growth habit. And this makes it a great street tree for uh, sidewalk neighborhoods where you have a, a close proximity from a little planting strip uh -huh. by the road between there and the sidewalk where you really don't have the room for a lower branch tree. This is a great choice for something like that where you can get, give you some upright, vertical, uh, straight up growth, have some shade from it, but not have the limbs over there fighting you in the face if yeah. you're walking or uh, walking the dog or out just taking a stroll it's nice to not have those tree limbs and you may not you may have trees that you just simply don't want to limb up way over your head well david i said i was going to go to an authority and you've proven that you've given good ideas for me and for our homeowners and thank you for letting us come into your busy day i appreciate you coming out today thank you